what changed in the last four months with COVID is that all our leads, all companies understand the importance of tracking visitors, registering them, asking them questions in advance, making sure that uh, their offices, their premises are protected. So before we had to convince them a bit more about that, uh, now there is no more discussion at all about the importance of tracking visitors. And what we've done is release a touchless check-in solution, including remote registration, including uh, touchless check-in at the front desk through uh, access control or on the iPad, and including data deletion after, uh, after a certain time. So that is what has changed recently. There's sort of thought about this. There's three things that matter right now. Uh, the first one is trust. The second one is regulations. And the third is biological. So let me quickly explain that from our context. So when we first started selling tr uh, and being in the, in the market of visitor management, trust was implied. You know, you uh, cloud, it was very early days of cloud. It was almost seen as witchcraft. And, um, but the trust that you could, that you could garner from, from your client uh, you gain that through through one on one conversation, through um, through face to face engagement, and so the opportunity to create empathy and rapport with your client was there, and so trust became something that was um, innate within the within the relationship, right? Because you could develop that, and it was very much implied. So there was no question about whether or not people trusted you. They trusted you before they trusted your organisation. That was enough. The big fundamental change that matters now is that trust has to be explicit. There's been too many data breaches, too many, um, uh, you know, uh, issues where uh, handling of information has been compromised by all sorts of different technologies in the world today. So now no one trusts organisations. As, as, as that, That's not implied, right? It has to be explicit. Um, you have to really earn that trust. That, that's the biggest change that we've seen in the marketplace in a very short period of time. We address that by going down our ISO 27001 certification to try and address that need and give people peace of mind. The second one that I wanted to speak to on that, um, so what matters now that didn't, was regulatory environment has dramatically changed. So the OSHA laws that govern the 50 states in the US, the 14 jurisdictions in Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, most Western countries have OSHA and health and safety laws. Historically, they weren't really policing those in the, in the context of visitor and contractor management, but now that's fundamentally changed. When I first started, people paid sort of lip service to health and safety when it came around managing visitor presence, etc. Now it's very much uh, policed. There is very strict fines on people and organisations if there is an injury or an illness on site. Um, and there's sort of three fundamental pillars to that um, that, that sort of regulatory framework in every country in the world. Can you account for and verify the safety of people in the event of an incident? Do you have effective procedures in place to prevent injury and illness? And the, and the third one is the ability to, to uh, create awareness of hazards inside the workplace. So these are the fundamental changes that we've seen in the area of regulation. Um, so there were three pillars. There was trust, regulation. The last one is biological. So what matters now is that biological threats and now part of the risk management framework. Obviously, that lens has been shone um, on the world because of the current pandemic. It actually started, you know, some sometime a lot earlier, like several years earlier. We started seeing organisations, particularly in food handling, um, start introducing screening questions into their visitor management process, like, have you experienced any flu-like symptoms in the last 14 days? So these sort of questions were starting to pop up in the conditional workflow uh, for visitor management probably four to five years ago. But instead of now being in food handling and limited to that, it's now gone mainstream. That's the fundamental change of what matters now uh, that hasn't previously. Yeah, I think the funny thing is it has mattered for a lot of people over some time to have a good process around getting people in and out of your facilities. Like that is something actually from a, uh, not only like does it matter just from a common sense perspective, but from a control perspective, many of the companies we work with actually are signed into different controls. And those controls, um, either by, you know, if it's a technology company, SOC2, um, you know, defense company, ITAR, there's PCI companies that do financial transactions. All of them have legal agreements, either with an auditory body or, or even just with clients in contracts 
where they don't allow unknown people in and out of the environment. And that, that extends itself to controls around offboarding employees who are no, who are no longer em, uh, um, employed, as well as visitors, as well as a whole cast of other people like contractors. Those, those things existed. And in fact, for many from a business continuity perspective, they were even tested controls. What's changed with COVID and just in general is that many of those tests were theoretical in nature. Uh, they would say, well, what if there was a pandemic? You know, how would you answer this control? Well, I think historically a lot of people thought, yeah, okay, like there could be one day, but how prepared do we really need to be for this? And we just released an article in Security Magazine where we had one of our customers and, and our subject matter expert speak on this topic now of how companies are linking revenue and risk to this topic, whereas before it was more like insurance, if, if, if I'm going to look at it that way.